Hi, I'm Daniel. Um, I don't have any hobbies, I don't have any friends, I don't have any life, and so I'm going to talk about C++. Uh, I want to tell you about a great, great journey into a particular, let's call it a feature of the C++ language that I've undergone last year. Shortly before the CM, there was a conference in Berlin, and we were, after the conference, sitting in the, in the Berlin office with a few other key Debians and in the evening, hacking on some software, drinking beer, and someone in the room suddenly asked the question, can I use umlauts in my variable names? And everyone in the room was like, Teh, maybe, why do you even care? But not me. I actually decided to dig into it, so I went on the internet, I googled, I read the C++ specification, and it said, yes, you can use umlauts in your variable names. This is also the result of searching the most German word on the internet. It's what you call the leg that carries the furniture. And the thing is that the C++ 11 standard says that you can use not just umlauts, that's silly, you can use a lot of Unicode characters. There is a quite large set of Unicode characters that are actually allowed in your C++ code as, a, as a type names or variable names or class names. So with that in mind, I'm sure everyone here is asking the same question that I was asking myself that evening when I discovered this feature. Does that mean that I can use the poop emoji in my variable names? Guess what? <laughs> Programmers in this room will agree with me that sometimes the hardest part about programming is coming up with good names for classes, whatever. Well, I saw it for you. <laughs> this gives completely new meaning to the expression crappy code. <laughs> now, you're probably thinking like, Dan, you, you can't be serious about this, right? This is useless. So how about giving names to lambda functions because they are so, so, so hard to search for, right? Or maybe you are writing, writing a uh, really, really complicated bank software and you would just like to have some currency uh, conversion in there. Well, you can use the euro sign now and you can use the dollar sign and all of this actually compiles. Every single slide in this presentation compiles except for one, but I'll tell you when you see it. Another thing that happens quite a lot when I'm sitting at home and programming is that so I'm working, and suddenly my screen flips upside down and mirrors, right? Doesn't happen to you? It's annoying. <laughs> so I started working around that so that I can continue working. Basically, I write the code upside down, so when this happens, I can continue coding and understanding what the class names are. Uh, of course, this still has the problem with the keywords, like the name, class, namespace, class. They are still normal. But two slides back or so, where you saw the, lamb the define lambda, Right? That means you can actually use Unicode even in your C++ preprocessor or C preprocessor macros. You just need to make a special header file where you define all the, all the keywords and then you can have most of your code upside down. Useful. Another thing I really hate about C++ is that it forces some things on me. Like, it de like who, who, who decided how much is two? Like, why can't I set how much is two? Good luck debugging this, right? <laughs> the trick is that Two doesn't really equal smiley. It's still just a smiley equals two. Uh, the thing is that it's not a smiley. It's an Arabic right to left character. So it flips the entire expression. But still, good luck debugging that when you see it in the code. I see from your faces, most of you are like, oh, I, I, I really hope this doesn't work in cute. Well, this is what you want, right? <laughs> this is what you really want. Well, bad news, this, this doesn't compile. Uh, it's not a problem with the, the guy. Uh, it's problem with Qt. Uh, the the mock mock uh, preprocessor it doesn't support uh, Unicode. Uh, too bad, right? So we, we can't actually do this in Qt. Oh wait, can we? There is this thing called Verdigree, and this is how it turns educational. So Verdigree is a project from our friends at Wobok. It's basically just two headers that use C++ template magic to produce a mock compatible meta objects by the compiler itself. You just need to use different macros and include the files. And as I've shown previously, compilers do support Unicode. Just a small change, and it compiles. And you can attach gamma ray to it. When I joined the company, one of the first things I was taught is always think how this is good for the company. So I sat down, and I thought really hard. <laughs> <laughs> and the only thing I would come out that this is good for is getting myself fired. But eventually, eventually, I, I got this idea, right? So as developers, we suffer a lot because we constantly have to wait 
for all these development environment tools and, and, and debuggers and all these huge, massive studios to start. Right? They are huge. They take a long time to start. How can we use this particular feature to, to make them faster so that we spend less time waiting for our tools and more time actually earning money for Jesper? And it turns out that, well, the slowest part of the computer is the disk, right? So to make it start faster, you need to make it smaller so that it loads faster. And we have this nice tool called Gamma Ray. You know Gamma, that's five characters, right? <laughs> So, so that's five bytes, and we can reduce it to two bytes by using the Unicode gamma. So last year, when I did this presentation, I actually got the source code of gamma ray. I used sets to replace all the gammas by actual gammas in the source code, and then I compiled it. Well, it didn't compile, right? I told you that Q doesn't support Unicode. So what I did last year is I, I, I just manually fixed some of the mock files to make it compile. Sadly, it didn't work this year for some reason. So it didn't compile, and when it compiled, it crashed immediately. So I, I had to find another way. Uh, of course, I mentioned Verdigree. That would be a suitable uh, fix. Unfortunately, Gamma is way too big for me to manually fix all the classes, right? That would take at least an evening. No, no, no. Instead, I could buy a lot of beer, and I could fix mock to support Unicode. So I spent five beautiful evenings fixing mock. But eventually, I got gamma gamma ray. So the result of this experiment, when you compile the original gamma ray and the gamma fight gamma ray, is that I managed to reduce the size by 1%, <laughs> which is a huge speed up in start. So this is a proof. This is the madman running in a gamma fight gamma ray. How is this even more cool? Is that now we have two gamma rays, right? I can take an innocent app, like Dolphin here, which is a cute app, and I can attach Gamma Ray to it. And I can take this Gamma Ray, and I can attach the other Gamma Ray to the Gamma Ray. And then I can take more Gamma Rays, and more, and more, and more, and more, and one more, and one more. Until eventually my computer dies of gamma radiation. <laughs> but of course this is pointless. All you really, really want is just another refactoring tool. Thank you.